Abdullah ibn Umar said, the Prophet ﷺ approached us. He's about to say something so important that he just remembered. He said, Ya ma'ashar al-muhajirin. O oh, noble muhajirun. O oh, migrants. He's talking to Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali. These were the ones who migrated from Mecca to Medina. Because this was at the masjid of Rasulullah He said, O oh, noble men of muhajirin. There are five bad things that are going to happen. They are going to befall my ummah towards the end of time. وَأَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ I seek refuge in Allah that it does not happen in your time. It's such a difficult challenge. He said, and I want the young people to listen to this especially, parents also indirectly, close one ear and open the other ear. He said, number one, when sexual obscenity becomes widespread, a widespread norm in my ummah. And it will never happen except if they start committing it publicly and publicizing it openly, meaning they feel proud about talking about it. They feel good talking about it. They don't have to do it, but they talk about it, they publicize it. Rasulullah said, they make i'lan for it they make an advertising for it do you know what that means it means that when you're at school for example at high school and you hear your friend talking about going out with a boyfriend or a boy saying i've been out with this many girls they're actually lying to you it's not true and then you go and do it because you think everybody else is doing it Immense studies have come up today telling us research about high school students, young people. Why do they commit zina? They say because they think everyone else does, but they don't. And everybody loves to publicize themselves that way. And zina is not publicized just by merely saying, I go out with this person or that person. Today on social media, it's publicized in an indirect way. How? The way girls and boys pose on the internet to other people. That type of posing is a sexual posing, my brothers and sisters in Islam. The way they do it with their mouth and with their eyes and with their faces. Rasulullah told us they publicize zina. You, you know that round mouth thing? What do they call it? Huh? Duck face. What? Duck. Oh, anyway, it's got some kind of name. This thing was taken from the baboon kingdom. Did you know that? You study zoology, I'll tell you, it took it from the baboon kingdom. Because the baboon have a big red side. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's lipstick or degrading anybody. No, 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 no. I'm saying they display it in order to call the mate. Now we're displaying it, boys and girls. I'm not talking about females only. I'm talking about men as well. I'm not being sexist here. I'm saying the publicizing of sexual material and sexual images. Sorry if I said that word too many times because we live, and I'm going to say it one more time, in a hypersexualized society. Rasulullah told us this is what's going to happen, and this is the most widespread thing right now. Most widespread thing right now. People are going to die with this. It is an absolute epidemic that Rasulullah told us. Wafasha zina. Zina is widespread throughout. He's not talking about the non Muslims, he is telling the ummah, he's saying, My ummah, they will be in that. And then sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, then mark my words, he said, then mark my words, terminal illnesses, diseases and pain that had never existed in their ancestors before them will come, become widespread among them. And this is the types of, this, he called it ta'un. Ta'un in those days was any unknown sickness that brought death to a person. There was no cure to it. And he said, there will be diseases that have no cure that will become an epidemic among my ummah. Today we have HIV, AIDS, and we have STDs, sexually transmitted diseases. Now I have questions like this from the Muslim community. Brother said, I'm a marriage celebrant. So people come to asking me questions. Can I get married? I said, yes, why not? And these are the types of questions I'm getting now. Brother, do I have to tell this person that I'm getting married to that I have STD? Did you know that these are the questions they're asking me right now? 
all over the place. We say, yes, of course you have to tell them because it's a contagious disease. They say, what if I have it under control? There's some kind of control pills. Say, but when you, when you don't have the pills, they actually, what, they exacerbate. And then if they're pregnant, they have a child, the child gets that STD as well automatically. Did you know that? Among the Muslim ummah? You know why? Because people, what they say is, that Muslims, they say, I'm not committing zina, but they do everything else. And look what happens, as Rasulullah told us. I'm, you know why I opened up with this? You're probably thinking, why have I opened it up with this? We're talking about the last day. This is the last day. The last 1,000 years of this world, right towards the end, this is what has happened to us. So Rasulullah told us that this is what's going to happen. Five things. The th second thing he said, they will cheat in their business and trade as a livelihood. And that's when drought will come upon them, meaning poverty, dictating rulers and oppressive rulers upon them. Maybe not in Australia, but in 60% of the world. This is happening among the ummah. They live upon cheating, lying and betraying. It happens here in Australia too, if you don't get caught legally. For example, give you an example. A Muslim wants to buy a car from another Muslim. One Muslim says, Wallahi, it cost me this much. The other Muslim believes him because he said, Wallahi. So then the other Muslim wants to blackmail him. How does he blackmail him? By using verses of the Quran and hadith. Says, Ya Akhi, Allah said, Rasul Sallallahu said, Love for your brother what you love for yourself. I'm your brother. Give me a cheaper price. So the other brother resorts to the Wallahi thing and he resorts to the hadith thing. Each one blackmailing the other person with the religion. And this brings to me a hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where he said, and people, this is in Ibn Majah, he said, People will use the religion for their worldly gain. This is towards the end of time. They will use the religion for their worldly gain. They will use the religion for a status. Look at me, I'm a sheikh. Now listen to me. I'm a sheikha, female. Now listen to me. I am uh, such and such of a person. This is my hadith and ayat. Now I will get to make people believe what I say and I'll be the person who everybody listens to. It's even worse today because we get to hide behind usernames on, com on the computer. Everybody, even the most shyest of people have be has become the loudest person now. Sits in their bedroom, hides behind the username and feels it okay to type anything. It never goes off. And this is where your fatwa now is. People kind of believe some things when they get written. I don't know why. This is the world we live in. Using the deen for worldly gain. Number three, he said, they will stop their zakat. People, how many people even know the rules in Islam of zakat? What are the rulings of zakat? How do you give zakat? For what do you give zakat? I'm sure, mashallah, a lot of us lot know a lot about Islamic finance and the riba banks. Because many Muslims, they say, what's this Islamic finance business? I'll just go to ANZ. It's the same thing, man. This is trade. This is, it's just a different name, they say. If everybody's such an expert on Islamic finance and all this other finance, how come they don't know much about zakat? Yani, this is what Rasulullah is saying. People become ignorant about their own deen. Number four, he said, they will betray the promises and loyalty to Allah to the point that the enemy will control and possess their wealth. Now, millions and billions of dollars are given away to the non-Muslims to deal with it in our own countries and control us. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet ﷺ said the fifth thing is their leaders and figures do not apply the laws of Allah's book but choose what suits from them for themselves until Allah curses them with disunity and enmity amongst each other. I say to you, it's not just the leaders but all figures. Everybody now has become a leader, a self-appointed leader of themselves on social media, for example. And what it has caused is disunity and defragmentation of our ummah. We cut each other off. We don't talk to each other. We meet each other now on Facebook and that's about it really. People don't meet anyone anymore. People don't say salams except to people who they know. Otherwise, it's a very individualistic society. We live in a society where it's about you and only you, myself and me. Rasulullah told us the last day will be about that. About me and myself or I. Three most common words used now. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us towards the last hour, towards the last hour, there will be extreme display. 
تُعْرَضُ الْفِتَنُ The fitan, the trials and tribulations, will be displayed before you. There's a very intricate word he is using here. Display meaning they will be placed in front. You don't, you're not even looking for it, but it will be in front of you. Just like the pieces of straws in a straw mat. There's so many of them and these straws are displayed to you. These fitan are straight displayed to you like all the individual straws in a straw mat. If you ever look at a straw mat, it's got about 10,000 straws in it, maybe 100,000 straws in it. When you look at a straw mat, you see all the straws individually, don't you? Don't you kind of see how they go along and, and they're all at once. So Rasulullah is using a metaphor here. He's saying the fitan will be so many on that day that you will look at them You'll see them all at once in front of you and you recognize that each one is on its own. Fitna after fitna after fitna after fitna all displaying themselves in front of you. He said, there will be two hearts on that day. Two hearts. One type of heart will be pure and the other type of heart will be murky, stinky and ugly and dark. The pure heart will be the ones that reject these fitan and try to go against it. And the fitan, the hearts which will be dark and murky are the ones who take it and accept it and love it. Once I was driving out of my house, I went down to the next street. This street is two way, cars coming this way, cars going that way. So if you go down in one direction, it's very hard to overtake another vehicle. As I was reaching the roundabout, there was a bus stop. I looked at the bus a few meters ahead and right at the back of the bus is a huge picture of a woman partially naked. Now, you shouldn't be shocked because this is very normal, isn't it? Is it normal or not? Normal or abnormal? Very normal. Normal everywhere you go. You just drive, kids see it, very normal. So I said, I better beat that bus because if I don't beat it, the bus is going to be right in front of me. And I can't overtake because there'll be cars coming this way and I have to look at the bus because otherwise I'll have an accident. What am I looking at? The picture. So then the bus went in front of me. How strong is the shaitan? So the bus went in front of me, driving behind this bus, where do I have to look? Trying to look away, I'm, I'm going to have an accident. Until the bus, alhamdulillah, went away. Astaghfirullah al-Azim. I said, Sadaqa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Truthful is he, that the fitan will be displayed before your eyes. You can't even run away from it. This day and age, the other day this brother said, Brother, I lowered my gaze to the ground and I see a magazine with another woman on it. I looked away from this at a shop right there, displayed on the window. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. You're going to read your email, bang, right in front of you, this junk mail comes up, sometimes they display. Isn't that correct? Everywhere. Grade fives and sixes are now looking at stuff they shouldn't be looking at by the time they're in year nine. Allahu Akbar gone with the wind. Pornography has become a widespread epidemic today. Rasulullah ﷺ told us on before the last hour, there will be a time when people will look at this as very normal to the point where you will see people committing the act of zina on a normal street where people pass by in a public area and people will take it so normal and ordinary that you say, look, at least, you know, that's cute, but at least you can go aside a little bit there away from the people, let us walk. People see it very normal. Now we've gone even more than that. That was probably a few uh, decades ago. Now it's even worse. People aren't out in the street anymore. They're inside their homes. In the other day, you know, in my day, my parents, if they sent me to the room, it was a prison for me. Today you send the child to the bedroom, it's paradise. Give them an, give them an iPad, their phone, or a computer. They don't want computers anymore. And the whole world is at their feet. They don't need to go out anymore. Brothers and sisters in Islam, wallahi, it's an epidemic.